Recorded live on location at the Generation X Comics Game Studio, it's Tree Paper Hacks, episode 17, with your hosts, Mark and Alex. Thank you, announcer boy. That was, that was almost right. I what, think what he did great. Well, he was in a hurry tonight. He had to get out of here. He missed Valentine's Day yesterday because he can't count, so uh, he, he had to get home because his hamster was waiting for him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we are recording live, <laughs> live. Uh, hamster free, from <laughs> Generation X Comics and Games Studio over here in downtown beautiful Bedford, Texas. Southeast corner of Harwood and 121. Right next to Taco Bell. Old fake meat. Old fake meat. <laughs> Old fake meat. Old fake meat. Yeah, that should that does that suffice enough? I think that we said okay. that plenty of times. Okay, good, yes. Good. Um, now let's take a let's take a somber turn here. We have to do some introductions. <sighs> oh no, I like this part of the show. You're the one that doesn't like this part of the show. This is great. I'm excited about this. All right. Well, let me introduce Jason Dyer himself, Tech Booth. I'm not a smart man. <laughs> Say hi, Tech Booth. Hi, Tech Booth. <laughs> Uh, well, you know what? That that's better than the, the the last several you've had with the smell and the problems and the things. Yeah, it's just a thanks, it's Mark. A, yeah, thanks. I'm I'm trying to help. It's Thank a you. deeper level insult now. <laughs> it, it's intelligence. It's not personal. It's it's fine. Is that what you do? Are you needling out my weaknesses like <laughs> one bumper at a time? <laughs> I hope I can just make you a crumpled shell of a man. One sound drop, yeah, at a time. Okay, so we actually are not by ourselves, Mark. What? Oh. I didn't know that. Uh, we have guests in studio. Okay, good. It's been a while since we've done that. I know. We used to be so lonely. <laughs> so, oh, so, so lonely. lonely. Uh, okay, so to our right, I know y'all can't see anything right now unless you're watching the YouTube stream. The yeah, game. we're on YouTube now, so you can see how ugly we oh, is. Oh my god, this is live. Oh, it's not no, live. It's not live, no. <laughs> You're okay. You've got like. You say hello <laughs> to the future. There are thousands of people watching you right now. <laughs> You can feed a poor Croatian child for five cents a day. <laughs> I can go ahead and tell you right now, folks, with our guests, it's going to be one of them kind of episodes. <laughs> one of them kind? One of them kind. All right, to my right, from the Direct Damage Cast podcast, is that how I refer to that? Is that right? Yep. Uh, I am joined, or we are joined, uh, by host Layfield and his wife, Mary. Say Hi. Audibly say hello. Hello. Hi. There you we have go. microphones. Yeah, like a, <laughs> this is a podcast. No, this, we is, make this noise. is new for me though because normally no one can see me. So now I can just all my hand gestures people can Likewise. see. Likewise, ignore the camera. The camera's not the there. The camera no. is not even the priority. That little microphone in front of you and the microphone in the front of the camera is priority. Uh, everything else is just a bonus. Yeah. Great ching. So, and to my left, uh, our house uh, expert on magic, magics, the gatherings. And actually, let's be honest, pretty much all things gaming, Hawks knows a lot of stuff. Uh, yes, yes, Josh Hawks. Say hi, Josh. Hello. I think we refer to you as Hawks. Is that... Yeah, I mean, everybody here refers to me as Hawks, so you might as well just do that. Okay, great. Um, <laughs> he, he is really in-house. Judge! <laughs> judge! He gets called that a lot. <laughs> yes, that too. Yeah. He, he, I do respond audibly to Judge. <laughs> he so, is in-house. He works with Jason and I at Generation X. So. And he's a L1. Take that. I don't know what that oh. is. Okay, so here's the thing. Alex is incredibly outside of his comfort zone tonight. We are talking for the first segment um, about Magic the Gathering and, and why that correlates with y'all's podcast, how it works at the comic shop. Because it turns out uh, a lot of comic book nerds are in these uh, comic shops, and within the comic shops are often gaming tables. And there's that batch of nerds that has no idea what's going on over there. It's got a weird haze about it. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of uh, paint fumes flying around and... Dust on cards. You know the gamers yeah. say the same thing about you comic nerds, too. Right? I'm sure that's the <laughs> truth, and that's also part of the uh, audience listening. Um, but trust me, if the magic doesn't work for you, uh, hang out. We're going to talk a little bit later on the Spider-Man uh, moving over to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah, all the Sony rumors are true. Weird. Yeah, and we have <laughs> we have audio for that, straight from the Marvel executives themselves. Stick, stick around for that. Uh, and then we'll close out the show with Stereotypes. Um, Mark's gonna challenge me on stereotypes. This is good. It's it's not a bad thing. This is just, this is fandoms. This what is, what people think of fandoms. Yeah. So I'm gonna. He's gonna ask me some questions. I'm gonna give my immediate response, and you're gonna see if you agree. It's gonna be amazing. 
<laughs> All right, but let's get let's dive into this, and I'm gonna I'm gonna really let Mark take the reins on this. Let's talk some uh, magic. So, let's talk with some magic, guests. yes, because Layfield, his podcast, Direct Damage Cast, is mainly magic, or was started off mainly magic. Is he, that how that works? Uh, yeah, we so we talk about Magic the Gathering, roller derby, wrestling, life in general, the universe. So it's, it's it's evolved into just a general podcast. Yeah, I mean, those are some pretty rocking niches. Roller derby and yeah. wrestling. Well, my oh my, my co-host full southern with the <laughs> they, those it. kind of kind of funnel <laughs> yeah. into each other usually. So. My my co-host Casey played roller derby for years, like five years. Wait, I, I've, I've met now. her. She's this big. She's yeah. like a oh, hundred yeah. pounds. Oh, she's, Casey's she's a woman. A I didn't yes. get that. Mean that. Yes. Wait, did you roller derby in general. No. Oh yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> See, Alex wink. is way out of his comfort zone. He has I, no idea what's happening. Well, what's a woman? Wink, wink. <laughs> nudge, Shut nudge. up, Rob. Say no more. <laughs> yeah. Uh, never mind. <laughs> so, no, how, how anyway, long has can't... Direct Damage Cast been a thing? How long have you guys been oh, podcasting? We've been podcasting for, oh, coming up on a year and like four months now. Right on. Like, we hit a year just, in fact, back in October. Wow. So, it's like. That's double. a big deal. Yeah. It was for us. It sure was. They're still going. Yeah. I mean, you're still living that rock star lifestyle, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Actually, the pod- podcasting has helped me make friends in the magic community I never would have had otherwise. Like, there are podcasters out there who, and if you want to start a podcast, anyone listening, do it. You can start a podcast about anything. Hit someone up. Talk to them. Hey, how do I start a podcast? You can find people anywhere. Talk about anything. That's all I got to do. Nobody gave us that advice. <laughs> no. yeah. We no. just said, hey, we're going to do a podcast. Why? Why not? Why not? Why not? <laughs> we were yeah. just sitting here bitching at each other, and somebody started recording it and put it on the internet. <laughs> Tech booth. That works. Yeah, yeah. that it's, works, too. That's what happens. Uh, I forgot to talk about at the beginning. Where are y'all hosted? Like, where? Let's let's start this out. Just in case somebody wants to pause the show, go listen to yours and come back. Uh, y'all on 0fortitude.com? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. If they pause this show and go listen to mine, they won't be back. <laughs> wow, <laughs> sick burn. Uh, <laughs> so, Layfield no, Perry won't be back. <laughs> you had me on. Don't so, me moving on to Spider-Man and Marvel. <laughs> we make people very angry on our show sometimes. No, no. On so so just your show? Yeah. You're making us angry on our show. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they hired me. We're about to throw down. <laughs> <laughs> Specific position need filled. Yeah. Jerk. Jerk. Just <sighs> yeah, but we already have Alex. We don't need another one. <laughs> Aww. Nice, that that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Damn, that's on work it. Or, yeah. Own who you are. Yeah, go with it. Work Damn it, work right. it, make it happen. All right, so as Alex said, comic shops and game shops kind of go together, and most of the times, like Generation X, you'll find that both happen in the same building. So, Calvin or Layfield, sorry, what kind of crossover do you see between that? Do you see a lot of Magic players that read comics? Yeah. So. Most Magic players are already nerds anyway. I mean, they... Natural and, progression. Right, and you can be a nerd about anything. Like, my nerdisms are... Well, I'm a nerd for pretty much everything, but mine started with football. Sports. Sports ball! Yeah, <laughs> sports ball, absolutely. And Magic the Gathering, Magic players, are, it's all about numbers and percentages, and all of that bleeds real well into sports. Baseball, football, it's all about the numbers. That's so, yeah, the whole fantasy football, baseball oh, yeah. side of it. Yeah, I do that too. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, yeah. But no, they, you're already a nerd. You're already in a, in a fandom, and I find that Magic the Gathering players don't start with Magic. They normally start with something else. Either... So here's what people explain to me when I, cause I never played Magic the Gathering. I saw some friends that did it, and and I never had that interest. So I had to, in prep for this show, ask somebody, um, what is Magic the Gathering, and they told me. That it was uh, a game people play when Yu-Gi-Oh is too complex. Is that true? <laughs> that is the exact <laughs> opposite. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> the the tagline. Sick bird. The yeah. 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 Sick bird. <laughs> so there's hardcore magic people out there I like think, Alex is a jerk. I think yeah. 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 you showed everyone on. Yeah. When yeah. we yeah. listen to this, one, yeah. there's gonna be yeah. two seconds of like yeah. volu- air volume reduction from everybody going. Trying to do. Wow. Did he really say that? <laughs> the uh. the tagline for Magic the Gathering should be drugs would be cheaper. Because they, they would. Oh, wait, that's BS. I've met Magic players. That's not exclusive to just Magic. There's drugs involved, too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I still think you're confusing Yu-Gi-Oh! with Magic. Have you seen the players? 
<laughs> you're telling me you're telling me the heart of the cards is actually just cocaine. Yeah, I mean, yeah. literally, you just rip one open, sniff. Crystal meth, and then it just comes pouring out. <laughs> I've seen that cartoon uh, once. <laughs> Didn't crystal meth a card in Yu-Gi-Oh? Are you sure? Three thousand yeah. damage. Yeah. 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 But you have to jump off a building first. You gotta. Well, that's how you do the three thousand. <laughs> right, yeah, damage. exactly. Well, listening to J-pop and. <laughs> I listen to J-pop. Mm. Oh. Exactly. Do you play Yu-Gi-Oh? No. Okay then. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, we have a fifteen-year-old daughter who listens to it. I have to listen to it. No, have to. You don't. Yeah. You know, it's never too late for adoption. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. That's rude. Wow. Let's continue. We're gonna off, off the rails here. He knows teenagers. <laughs> so, okay. Let, get, let me get this correctly. Okay, something that can relate to comic readers that don't quite understand. Magic does have a backstory, basically, to it. A, a, basically, a mythos behind it. Well, yeah. I mean, so if. If a comic book reader out there or a fan of your show doesn't know anything about Magic the Gathering, and, and Hawks can tell you this too, no. Magic is is built like it's like Game of Thrones. It's built upon an extensive world that has just grown and grown and grown. Okay. And the stories have gotten more in depth over time. In fact, we're dealing with our very first comic book reboot right now. We have so had they're one of those. rebooting Magic. Well, they're rebooting one of their. They have different planes of existence. Let's get, let's go ahead and do it like real quick. Top down. Do you want to handle the, the top down? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, in Magic: The Gathering, the characters that anybody and everybody cared about are called Planeswalkers, and they're incredibly powerful magical beings who can move from one plane of reality to another. So, like Earth would be a plane of reality, and then, for example, they could hop over to like the DC universe, hang out with those people for a while, and then pop over to the Marvel universe. And so in, in Magic the Gathering, there's literally an infinite, wor infinite number of worlds that these planeswalkers could go to. So you have an infinite number of potential characters on an infinite number of potential worlds. So that's, that's a big part of the allure of the story of Magic, is that literally anything that could happen will and does happen. So somewhere behind the scenes, Grant Morrison has a second hobby. He's, he's writing he, for magic. You know, he made the Eldrazi. Let's not get on. Yeah. <laughs> the giant spaghetti monster yes. thing. Yes. That is Grant Morrison. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Alex is just like, yeah, words <laughs> happened. <laughs> Unkillable spaghetti monsters. Who will destroy yeah, everything? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, there it is. Here's Alex's perception as a comic book nerd and nothing else. So they feel... Sure, why not? <laughs> why not? <laughs> like he made the Manhunters, okay? Is that, that help you? Yeah, 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 there you go. Yeah, yeah okay, okay yeah. yeah. So, Layfield, tell us about uh, the current, like, the Constant Secure reboot that you're discussing. We just went off on this on, on our cast this week because Sarkin is a planeswalker and his job in the current storyline was to go back and save another planeswalker, Ugin. He accomplishes this feat. Ugin Chaka. Yeah. Well, Ugin or yeah, Eugene. Exactly. You can call you him can Eugene. Help no. Eugene? Is Eugene. It? I, I like that. So that was his job Eugene. to go back and save this dragon planeswalker. He accomplishes this feat. But in true Doctor Who fashion, uh, by a timey wimey, yeah, by, wobbly wobbly. Wobbly. by saving this dragon, uh, the <laughs> <laughs> we can't talk about okay. enough things Alex doesn't care about. <laughs> uh, uh, so, how do you feel, feel about Southeast Asian markets? <laughs> Up, down, I'm all for the Asians. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but, uh, so. <laughs> Okay, Mr. In, Lee. Continue. In, tr in true time travel fashion, by saving this, by changing something, the butterfly effect happens, and Sarkin has made his own life an impossibility. See? You can't fix everything with time travel. Uh, but you no. can, because the problem no, you was... you can't. We just proved it. The problem was Ugin was dead. <laughs> yeah. And now he's not. And that got rid of Sarkin. Okay. No, it just which, postponed... Yeah. Sarkin, Sarkin's alive, it's just not the Sarkin from... It, like, there's... There's like Sarkin and Sarkin Prime now, and Sarkin doesn't exist, but Sarkin Prime does. Right. Well, that's bad because he's gonna punch a hole in reality like Superboy. <laughs> right. Prime, yeah. And see, and then they put. The, yeah. Or it's like the Back to the Future thing, where oh, each time you do something, it splinters off into another time. Are you line. trying to say Sarkin's gonna bang his mom? Yes. <laughs> All right. Cool. He's going to beat up Biff Cannon hmm. in the Old West. I want to see the Biff Planeswalker card. That's awesome. He, or, plus three. He already exists. It's called Sybil. No. <laughs> Hold on. I, I get it now. I get it. I 100% get 
why magic is one of Superman's one weaknesses. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well done. <laughs> now we're talking about things Calvin doesn't like. <laughs> Ooh. Don't feel bad. Nobody likes Superman. Yeah, nobody oh, likes man. Superman. I'm just gonna hide over. See that you yeah. put me over here for a reason. Superman yeah. levels Superman like just go down. Way yeah. Down. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, hey, from a business yeah. side, when you do these reboots, why do they do it? Now, in comic books, they do reboots uh, sure. when sales are struggling. When um, they run out of stories, they run out of stories. Uh, they're trying to get a new audience. Why do a reboot? Or why do a, uh, a a new jumping on point for new people? Is there a financial reason for that? Is magic a a is magic struggling financially, uh, or b um, y'all shaking y'all's head already? <laughs> yeah. Don't don't give it a chance. Okay, okay. All right. Or b um, is there? I mean, is the acquisition of new fans uh, necessary because this game is so damn old? All the original players are dying. Let me preamble. <laughs> let me preamble your your stuff. These real quick. thirty year old. Players. I'll, I'll answer your questions quickly, and then we'll try to let these guys explain what exactly this reboot is about. So it's a little bit different than the traditional concept. When we think comics and reboots, we think uh, tying off loose ends, creating a unified universe, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Uh, with magic, you have the ability to storytell about every three or four months. So new sets of magic come out, and what we're talking about in this particular case is a reboot that occurs within a cycle of three sets. So there was Khans of Tarkir, Fate Reforged, and then eventually Dragons of Cartier, uh, Tarkir. So what we see is this world where Ugin is dead, dragons are dead, stuff's happening. Sarkon goes back, and in the second set we see that he's brought us back in time to a point where those dragons still exist and he's trying to achieve his, his goal. Okay. And then the third one is the reboot, where the dragon is alive again, suddenly all the dragons are there in the plains and all that kind of stuff. So magic isn't flagging and they're not trying to push in that direction to get more people. Though I do want to actually answer your question in a way that... Oh, you want to actually answer my question? In a Thank real you, legitimate way because... Tech couldn't do it. Well, get te well yeah, tech with can. So, <laughs> so there was actually a, there was an actual magic reboot um, because Planeswalkers oh, is yeah. like a thing didn't really exist until recently. Like they existed, but they were basically gods. Like they could just make worlds. And to get around that problem and to get rid of a lot of weird continuity things that were happening and to boost sales so that they could have these iconic characters that people could relate to, they literally did restart the magic universe. So in a lot of ways, it's basically like what DC did with the New 52. They said, we're getting rid of all, all, all this old stuff because sales aren't going the way we want to. We, we, all the plot lines are broken and dumb and stupid. So let's just get rid of all of it and then reboot it with all these new iconic characters. Okay. When I mean, was that? What, that, was, that was the time spiral block. Those time spiral? Yeah, they literally yeah. restarted the magic universe. Can there. we put a, time, a real world time frame on that? Like uh, 2008? Right? Oh, yeah. so yeah, I it was earlier. Two thousand, two thousand eight or two thousand ten, somewhere in that time frame. So it's only been a few years. So, so like five to seven years ago. Yeah, because magic was like magic had like a really big upward spiral until the early two thousands, then it started going back down, and now it's going way back up. Yeah, because so as y'all know, magic kind of came out in ninety three, ninety four. So it's been around twenty Games years. Twenty years old. Yeah. yeah. So and that's that's a long time for a card game to be around. Right. Not to mention, like the last two years, we've seen exponential growth. And magic, as far as the number of people who are actively attending tournaments and things of that nature, and they largely attribute that to South you know, Park. Yeah, South Park. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's all about the the chicken Cock magic. magic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I didn't know if I could say that word. Um, Cock magic. Cock magic. Cock magic. Cock magic. <laughs> but no, like, he played an island, <laughs> and he taps the island. Played like fugitive wizard. That was the most manly thing I've ever seen. Yeah. yeah. But you I know, was like, gonna do some cock magic for you guys. <laughs> don't. No. Well, I mean, don't let me know. <laughs> 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 All right, I'm sorry. No, no, it's, no, no, so you know, like they put Wolverine on issues to sell Wolverine because Wolverine sells books in the so, 90s. That was, a, yeah, yeah, so, so they put it, cock magic on stuff, right? Like, yeah, so, I mean, right. yeah, you just put penises on everything money, <laughs> money, money, money. <laughs> step one, penises, step two, <laughs> step three, profit, profit. profit. Yep. done. <laughs> but I think Josh had a point. What was it? Uh, we were oh, somewhere with reboots. Yeah, yeah characters. Because Magic rebooted and allowed themselves the Planeswalkers. Like, not that anybody who doesn't know Magic, but, you know, Jace Bellerin and all those people. People to identify with allows you to sell more things. Because people will Jace. Find them. Yeah, I know. You hate Jace. Jace is the coolest. I don't know what that is. Jace. He, so there's like five. Uh, there's a poster. If, there, if Magic had a Justice uh, League, that's what we're naming. Yeah. There's uh, Jace who represent, represents the color blue. There's a Johnny who is usually white. There's Liliana who's black. White guy. Chamber who's red. And Garuk, who's green. Yeah. So no black so, guys. No. Well, there's a, a black woman. 
Okay, well, good. There we go. So we're being more there's diverse. Some, and, some and, and she's Johnny, even bisexual, so. Technically a lion man. I yeah, that's mean, true. Yeah. Lion. And, and, you know, Magic just had its first trans character, so. Yeah, that, that's true. Yeah. Yes. Wow. They did that. Yeah, they're was it a shapeshifter or like an actual trans? No, character? like it was it was a, a person. Because they tried to pull that crap in comic books. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Sorry <laughs> mistake. That crap. Yeah, that work. <laughs> really? They tried to do that. That yeah. she's defined as a transsexual that, character. No, what? She's a shapeshifter. She I, has I, like both sets of genitalia. I don't really? know. She identifies one way or another. Huh. We're well, not getting into that. Well, she can have either one she wants. Well, right, but I like time. like does <laughs> any <laughs> Audi, any Audi. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Which is her belly button, right? That's what we're talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's like oranges. Wow. All right, I'm sorry. No, no, it's... Uh, yeah, no, it was... It was that someone biologically born fast. as a man who chose to name herself as a woman. Oh, I'm not getting into the lore, but yes. So... So, yeah, the reboot that Hawks was talking about was because they wanted players to be able to play with the Planeswalker cards because technically the player is also a Planeswalker. Yeah. So you could not summon someone who was on your level. So... They did that. This reboot, and the reason that we went off on it on my podcast, is I don't know that it was on purpose or if it's a mistake. Because now they have just erased a character who took part in major events from other planes. With like, other well, planes that, and that's what I was getting at with like the Sarkin Prime stuff. Because it's like, there had to have been a Sarkin to do all this other stuff that happened. Right. Or else the whole timeline gets nuked. So, so it's kind of like when DC did Flashpoint... They go back, Flash saves his mother, never becomes the Flash, and the whole world goes to hell. Right. Batman yeah. doesn't, isn't really Bruce Wayne, it's his dad. Right, Aquaman died. and Wonder Woman are trying to kill each other. And so after, after, the after what sleeping the together, what? she killed his wife. Yeah, yeah all of this because Flash, Flash saved gone. his mama. See, yes. I really need to read this Flash for No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 the movie's the hot good. garbage, the comic was hot garbage, the whole idea was hot garbage. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I kind of think New 52 is a little no. hot garbage. So. DC, you done... Up. <laughs> <laughs> They're fixing that though. Right? No more deleted. continuity. <laughs> no more continuity. That's another topic. Oh yeah, well that's that's the talk we handled last week. Ah! Listen to last week's episode. Yeah. Do that <laughs> after this one. Okay, so uh, we're kind of running out of time. Um, yeah. They, did you have anything else you need to ask these folks before uh, they? Stood up, walked out, and got you know angry at us. No, they're gonna. We're gonna ask them to stick around. Remember? Oh snap! We can do that. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, we have that no, power I'm... and that ability. <laughs> You're right now. Flip the table, scoop it. I mean, if I'm saying I need a bowl of brown M Ms. Yes, just <laughs> brown M Ms. I'm not gonna. Uh, but just suck keeper. all this outside <laughs> off. Put the chocolate back in there. So. <laughs> all right. Okay. So I'm gonna once again. Uh, go ahead and thank our guest from the Direct Damage cast, uh, hosted over there at 042.com, yep, if, yep. if they want to take a listen. Please uh, do. Real Visit. quick, how, what is the technology behind y'all recording? You told me this earlier off air. Uh, Casey and I use one little Sony microphone and we record in usually her truck. It's a handheld recorder. Yeah, handheld recorder. So it sounds we, great. We yeah. spent two hours setting this up for this. Yeah. Two and a half. Same. Thank Thanks you. for counting. <laughs> Thanks, Lee Bill. We, we I don't that. have yeah. a Good table job. flip. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> we need to work yeah. on that. And uh, all right, so that's that's Layfield and Mary over there, over from Direct Damage Cast. Uh, Mary, you have your own uh, podcast. Let's plug that real quick. It's Zero Fortitude. Oh, so it is Zero Fortitude. It's the flagship podcast. It's they the just flagship. call it Zero Fortitude. Yeah. Oh, okay, so y'all are Trust all over me, that. Trust me, we tried coming up with different names, and that was the one that stuck. So yeah. that very creative team over there. <laughs> Uh, and once again, our in-house Generation X expert, uh, Josh Hawks, over here. Um, Pleasure we'll probably have you more on in the future when we talk some gaming stuff. So, And we always invite y'all back, and we invite you to hang out for the next segment. We're actually going to talk a little bit of uh, Spider-Man. Spider-Man's now in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Well, he will be. He's not Yay. yet. No, he's there, dude. Like All Right, right here in uh, my chesticle area, Spidey's already home. <laughs> <laughs> Just I tell you in your heart. Yeah, it's been filled. Hang out. We'll talk a little bit more about this uh, when we get back. All right, and we are back, and listen... <laughs> We're gonna talk some comic books and comic book stuff and comic book movies and comic books 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 and not magic anymore, unless it comes up relevantly. 
It will. It'll sneak its way back in. There. It always does. Smooth transition. No, 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 folks. Welcome to Alex's comfort zone. We're going to talk about the new Marvel news that broke immediately after it's we recorded the last episode, and we Sony all Sony news too. Damn it! Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sony's um, ass is being saved. Sony and Marvel got together and made a spider baby. It's <laughs> 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 a little nasty I don't hatch. Picture that. Kind of bad Nobody advantage. told you to picture it. There's people who go see that movie though. <laughs> Making a spider baby? Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, you know I don't feel comfortable movie? on this podcast anymore. <laughs> Isn't that how Mary Jane got cancer one time? Mayday uh, Park. Yes, I just read about stop, that. Stop, actually. stop, 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 stop. We're talking about <laughs> Marvel getting back, well, not getting back, but acquiring the rights to include Spider Man. In the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yay! Yay! Come on. Did, weren't we just <laughs> complaining? Uh, uh. <laughs> I'm happy. I just don't want to... You can be the bitter one, Tech Booth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, so here's a big deal. Um, officially, uh, you'll see Mar- uh, Spider-Man in the same silver screen as the Avengers. And we might actually see some of the Avengers in some of the Spider-Man movies. Well, it's more than just Avengers. It's anybody in the MCU. Well, anybody in the MCU, but they use the word Avengers. Daredevil. Whatever else is there. Is it confirmed the that, it's, that it's not just Spidey, but all of his cohorts and bad guys and all that stuff? I'm not 100% sure. They've kind of been shady about that, because they're still saying they're going to make a Secret Six movie. or Sinister, Sinister Six. Sinister Six. Wrong universe, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get a hate mail for that. A couple people on our Facebook asked that same que- question if more characters are going to start getting brought into that mix, and they haven't announced that. Okay. Everything they said in that it, press release was just Pete Parker. Um, it would make sense. Now, here's here's what they wanted. Now, we, you, you know all about the Sony hacks that came out a while ago. Um, yeah. Didn't we make fun of that? We did, okay. and uh, it paid off because somebody mm-hmm. sent us some audio files that they hacked out of Sony. And what this was was conversations between uh, Marvel and Sony, and we only have the Marvel half of it. Uh, this is an executive, an unnamed executive, at the Marvel Studios um, that we have uh, audio of. Now, they were talking about, well, what is this going to cause? Is, is it good? Do they want this kind of gossip? And this is the kind of, this is the audio we have out of that. Uh, here we go. Gossip. Rumors. Panic in the streets. We're lucky. So that's what the Marvel executive wanted, and that's. <laughs> I think I know where you got this, where this all this information came from. No, I mean this is straight out of the hacks. I know it's from our it, from our insider that knows how Wait, the hacks are going. Here's down. the original part of. Uh, this is how the conversation. Started. This is how the conversation wanted, um, and this is what Marvel opened with. I want Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> Marvel negotiates very aggressively. Very yeah. aggressively. <laughs> Super <laughs> aggressive. <laughs> Nothing but aggro. Now. <laughs> They're red burn. <laughs> no more magic references. No more magic references. <laughs> Alex is like, ooh. <laughs> Do it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Piss him off. <laughs> Tap two, make a magic reference. <laughs> ah. <laughs> uh, what's, what's happened to our show? <laughs> so, uh. Apparently, they realized this was going to be a mutual benefit. And the end game of it all was that Sony gets to use some Marvel characters, Marvel gets to use Spider-Man, and guess how much money changed hands for this deal? I'm asking Magic players. Go. I already know the answer. Zero. Zero. Zero dollars (laughs) for exchange. It is absolutely mutual. Now, they didn't start there. According to our audio, they went back and forth on price negotiation. Oh, yeah. Uh, so here's the audio from that. Give me a 50 bucks. I can get more than that on eBay. All right, 100. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently... Spider-Man okay. only goes for 100? <laughs> wow, we aggressive got, negotiations. We should have got Mar- <laughs> Spider-Man then. We could have come with 100 bucks. You don't want to get into a bidding war with Marvel. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> what? Disney, give me more money. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, they could easily go to 200, 210, maybe. Yep. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> That's that way be, outside yeah, your guys. We'd be past yeah, that. We... Getting shanked by Mickey Mouse is no fun. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Die>, sucker! <laughs> now, of course, this Marvel news, um, Marvel Spider Man news came with, with some casualties. Uh, everybody's favorite Spider Man, <clears throat> mine. Um, 
Andrew Garfield will probably be recast. Uh, it, uh, he is. Yeah, they, they he, said that was that was one of the stipulations. He, Opted out of returning. No, nah, well, now there's some there's some rumors back that when Spider-Man Two released, he said nothing but bad things about the producers and then wanted to change the right. studio, wanted to change stuff. Rightfully so. That movie it was sucked. Awful. I it mean, Garf- sucked. I agree with you. Garfield's great. I like Garfield, but the movies are awful. Yeah. Um. Well, and I always said it was Spider-Man. Amazing Spider-Man Two was a really good love story and a really crappy superhero movie. Yep. That's that was my yep. opinion. Um. Now. Once Marvel figures all that out, uh, well, this is actually the, the conversation when they got the new, when Marvel got the news that Sony had agreed. Uh, their reaction to that, um, their reaction to Andrew Garfield, and and something after that. But hang on, so here's here's the overall play. Thanks for the good news, Parker. Hello, you're fired. <laughs> So that's exactly how it went down. <laughs> that's how I felt when I heard it. <laughs> that, that's, that was a good conversation for him. Yeah, it went, it, it went their way, and, and unfortunately, you know, we're going to have to get a new Spider-Man. Again. Uh, so what, what are y'all's opinions on, on the whole deal with Marvel now being able to use Spider-Man? Where do you think Spider-Man fits into that universe? Uh, what, you know, what good do you think is going to come out of it? What are you worried about? Mark, come on, man. you got to have some comments on this. I've got plenty of comments on this. I think he's going to fit perfectly. He's important. It's Spider-Man. He has to be in the Marvel Universe. The fact that they haven't had him yet is a travesty. Yes. He's, a, the, he's as important as any other character. He is. It, yeah. So, and the fact that it took him a long time, but they got him back. They got him it's back good. eventually. Now, I uh, guess, do y'all have any opinions on this? I, th- I think that having him in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, he will be one of the youngest characters on screen. I mean, you've got some of the, like, the grizzled veterans and they're the older heroes, and you see how... That's something they haven't done yet even in any of the movies. They haven't shown how a young person would tackle those issues and being put into those situations. So that, to me, is the best viewpoint you're going to get out of all of that. He stole my words. Pretty much, huh? He stole Stop. Do you have an opinion? Just took them right I mean, out of your mouth? He did. Oh, okay. That's there you fine. go. All I, yours. I think the best part about having Spider-Man around is that, like... I love the Avengers, but I always felt there was something missing from the team dynamic there. And if he does show up in one of his temporary roles on the Avenger, Avengers rather, you, you'll you'll finally feel like it's a whole team. Like it's it's always felt just a little off balance to me. He just, brings in that joking. Yeah, and I mean they have the jokiness with the in the Avengers movies, but he he solidifies that role of being a really solid character, but also bringing an appropriate level of levity to the team. See, I always had the problem with with the Avengers. You feel like they don't have a like a like, like a, a like a heart. Well, not even that. Like a, an individual people, um, like dynamic. Like wait, they don't wait, care wait, about. Wait, well, you cannot use individual and people in the same or sentence. Like, well, that. I'm sorry, caring about the the I'm individual sorry. person. All right, I people. screwed up. I screwed yeah, up. Yeah, let's let's get your let's get your sin. <laughs> okay, your syntax. Right Welcome here, to the grammar right? cast. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we will teach you to speak properly. Stop, 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 stop. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> come on, folks. Um, no, like caring about the citizens, like the like the victims, like all that. I feel like you, you got Captain America, who's a soldier. He understands casualties on the battlefield. You have Iron Man, who's so disconnected from the human element that you know he's a billionaire and he's he, you know, he's one to kill folks. I think you don't have a character that's afraid to not take people out. Now I know Captain America doesn't. Captain America in the, in the first movie would kill people mm-hmm. because he was in war. It happens. He killed he, people in the second one, too. He tried not to, but he didn't care as much uh, as he did. Or he cared more than he did in the first one. Uh, Thor, I mean, he, you know, he's a god. He's a, god. He's, he's god a warrior. Worlds, yeah. And yeah. then you got the, the other secondary characters. But you don't have a, a character who cares about those people on the street, doesn't want to take out folks. You don't have that that very high-end superhero, the morality like, superhero. You have, like, the you other know, two characters you sort of, I mean. Hawkeye like, and, and, three. Right, and ha- three. You forgot the Hulk. Oh, the oh, Hulk. Well, well, yeah, I mean, well, yeah. 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 Bruce Banner would they care are, about people. They are actually master assassins, so killing one or many people on a daily yeah, not really doesn't bother them, there. but it would right. bother Spider-Man. I think that's a cool element that they need. Yeah, it's, it's something like, that they could learn from. They've, they've been using Bruce Banner in that, because if you remember in Avengers when he falls through the ceiling, he was concerned if there was somebody else in that building whenever he destroyed I don't think it. he wanted any more guilt. I think he was tired of all the guilt he had from being the Hulk. So I think that's why he said that. Yeah, they do kind of heavily imply that he incidentally kills a lot of people in that. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. But you take 
fact that whole Battle of New York killed a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. what I was going to say. Is like, Cap, like, he was, he, in the Avengers, he was like, oh, you know, we need to evacuate everybody from, but right. that wasn't really like a, I care about the people, it's just like, we don't want these civvies in our battle. Because, yeah. I mean, like, you, you can't, you can't focus on fighting the alien threat while you're worrying about saving people out of buses and stuff like that. But yeah. Spider-Man would want it because he wants to get all those people safe. Like, he and actually Spider-Man cares could, about having Spider-Man could do it on a macro level. He could take right. care of that entire bus yeah. and just web them over somewhere or do something cool because he has right. the strength to do it and he has the abilities. And that's, that's, that's what they need. They need somebody focused on the people, not so much the enemy, but when he had to focus on the enemy, he would be smart enough to take care of that too. Yeah. That's always been kind of Spider-Man's best part. Now, the thing is, what Spider-Man does is, we talked about this in the last episode, he's very much the street-level view of whatever's going on in the crazy world of the Avengers, especially in the comics, like yeah, because he's the kid that just randomly got superpowers. Yeah, he represents us, whereas none of the other superheroes represent us. We're not billionaires. We're not uh, monsters. We're not gods. We're not frozen soldiers. We're like we are just yeah, we're just the regular people, and that's what Spider Man is. He's he's that student that randomly gets powers one day and just like, well, what would you do if you got powers one day? That's what that character represents. That's why he's important. I want to say the other cool part about having uh, Spider-Man in the uh, shared universe is that it'll make these Spider-Man movies feel more believable. Does that make sense? How do you mean the Spider-Man movies? With, like the Spider-Man like they're real isolated. Yeah, they're they, very isolated. They're very. You, don't, you don't have Stark yes. Tower in the background. You don't have, you don't have, but you they, know, the, 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 other they, people with the shield mentioned at all. They, they, they couldn't in that, though, is the thing, is why. I have a question about this, because uh, I'm a little bit confused, which means there's got to be other people also confused. Are you suggesting that the new movies, the new Spider-Man stuff, is going to be created by Marvel proprietarily? Because my understanding yes. of what's happening now I'm sorry. is I, that we can use Spider-Man in the MCU, but Marvel cannot create a Spider-Man standalone movie. No, 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 no. Marvel and Sony are collaborating on no, it. I'm that. sorry, I guess the, I did a poor job. Yeah, explaining. Marvel's got like the creative control. Essentially. Well, not final say, but they do have the majority control. So Sony's going to let them take care of the production. It's going to What's be Spider-Man is name? going to exist. Yeah, yeah, that guy, Kevin Feige, is just... on the yeah, is is the main creative person behind it. He's yeah. in charge of. As I read it, the way I understand it is, they said you can use Spidey in these movies. But you're going to help us produce a Spider-Man movie, Sinister Six by name, with Kevin Feige. They never, no. they never officially no. said anything about Sinister they've, Six. They've, they've basically said we will help with Spider-Man. Sony's doing Sinister Six on their own. But no, Kevin Feige is producing the next Spider-Man Sony movie. The next Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Peter Parker Spider-Man. Sony movie. Yes, Spider-Man. the next Spider-Man Sony yes. movie. That is so you're Spider-Man. saying Sony that, that movie will be MCU Incorporated? Yes. yes. Yes, I'm it. sorry. Yeah. No, that's what it says in the press yeah, release. Yeah, because they shuffle, like, Sony and Marvel both shuffled around their movie releases. They'll do the next Spider-Man, and then after that is going to be all the spin-off crap that they want to do. But there won't be... I don't believe that Marvel's going to create a Spider-Man movie by itself. I believe that what they're going to do is use Spider-Man no. in other stories and stuff. Peter's going to... Sony's going to have their own standalone Spider-Man movie. And it's going to be... Sony will, but Sony right. is not the MCU. I'm sorry, Tech Booth. Can you... I'm, just hear me out. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> because... <laughs> no... Sony is going to release a Spider-Man movie. Will that movie be? It would be as if it would be. Yes, it would be as if they released, if they had originally released Iron Man. That is not how I interpret what you guys have read. But dude, I can guarantee (laughs) you. I can guarantee you that That, it is. That's what they they've got (laughs) in their heads and they're doing. Yes. So that's why all the, all if you look at all that's the dates it, for it the went, MCU like, movies, yeah. all so the dates for the MCU shuffled. movies, so they could sh- shoehorn in a Spider-Man movie, and that's where the Spider-Man movies are going to live within the Marvel universe, probably bringing them in all the way up to the Infinity Wars. For the for the layman out there, for the regular guy, because I'm just a regular working class, used to play football guy. Basically, <laughs> the guy that's involved in the in the head of production for the stories for all the movies, Kevin Feige, F- F- that F- guy, yeah, he Kevin F. when they had their meeting. And they decided no money would change hands for any of that. They mm-hmm. said, look, we want to use Spider-Man in these movies. We want your help to make a Spider-Man movie. He goes, oh, yeah, I'm going to help you on the story for Spider-Man. We don't care about the money because we already own all the licensing and merchandising anyway. Fair. Exactly. So we're like, we get money you making, regardless. You making a better Spider-Man movie only helps us anyway. So what we need to do is help you make this better movie. Help me. Help, help you. you. Exactly. That is exactly so, how that works. I'm the minority people. perspective in that I don't... Th- Wow, that I think like you were the vast minority. Like yeah, other websites have clarified did. this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there are All people, right. There are people yeah, like, watching this who are like, this "Come on, This is one of like Amy Pascal's <laughs> last things to do before she got outed. Yeah. And she's actually got like producing credits 
on this movie. For the right. Spider-Man movie. Mm -hmm. Same with A.B. whatever his name is, did all the other Spider-Man movies. Um, Carnage, really, yeah, yeah, whatever. And he's got producing credit on there, but he has really no say. No in input into it? So yeah, I'm, he just gets his name. That's it. I have a quick question about all this Sony Marvel stuff. Have they... Because Sony still has the rights to X-Men? No, that's, no, that's Fox. Fox. That's Fox. Fox. Okay, Fox okay, okay. X-Men and Fantastic Four. Okay, that's that's why there was no. Okay, that's the that's ball, the bad blood know. argument. Yeah. Okay, that's see, I, I keep thinking that that things. that Sony has X-Men. I'm like, why didn't? Why isn't that happening? No, but okay, that, yeah. That's so, Brian Singer's a pretentious dick. Sorry, <laughs> I'm okay. That's our, that's so, that's Sony that. has X-Men and Fantastic Four, Fox. or Fox, Fox yeah. excuse me, has X-Men and Fantastic Four, and they had uh, Daredevil and Ghost Rider and all that stuff. And that uh, stuff came back. And that still, yeah. They, okay. that Punisher, too. Punisher. Punisher. Yeah. Yep. Blade. Okay, okay. so we like had uh, tons of good comments from Facebook. Fox, I think. They got pulled in the oh, server. Sorry. We had tons <laughs> of great comments come out of Facebook uh, when we posted the link. <laughs> uh, go ahead and read a couple. Uh, first names only, please. Uh, Preston was asking about this. I think I, he goes, I still say that Spider-Man, while very useful in the Civil War comic, isn't needed for the upcoming movie. So, Because the original rumor was that his first Spider-Man's debut in the MCU would be in Civil War. Correct. So if it's... Is it going to be Civil War? They haven't said which, so... No, it's going to be Civil War. His first movie is going to be Civil War. Now, that doesn't mean that he's not going to make a debut. And maybe some cameo, cameo or something, or something in, in Ultron if they even shoehorn it in somewhere. So, so we're well, talking I think the next Avengers movie after Age of Ultron. Yeah, that, that's that's well, a, the that next should be no, no, first. That's, that's Captain America: Civil War, which is I mean, you're out. talking next MCU movie. After okay, okay, Age I wasn't sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, his full Smith. integration in theory is going to be in the Infinity War. Gotcha. Okay, but he'll be introduced in Civil War, which I think that's going to be shoehorning too much into that Captain America movie. You got Iron Man, you've got Black Panther. You've got Captain America, and you got the Civil War idea. Why throw Spider-Man into that fire, too? I think another thing Preston said in that in that comment that was um, about a mile long, which we support, say what you want to say. Yeah, tell us. Yeah, yeah let's hear it. Um, is that that was probably something that was originally going to go to Ant-Man, or it could have been perfect for Ant-Man to deal with. Well, especially since Ant-Man's going to be established before that. Yeah, so... There was, I mean, there's some opportunity that they may be swapping around now that they have an extra playing card. Which which I don't, that that makes me nervous. Does that mean they're not putting their full support behind Ant-Man? Yeah. I don't know, man. Like, they have options, but maybe they they'll options, put it somewhere else. You don't want too many options, though, because then you're going to start making mistakes. Let's see how, they haven't disappointed us yet. They, they haven't, and I'm just waiting for that shoe to fall, so... I mean, they gave us a talking tree. Uh, yeah, yeah, a sort of talking yeah, yeah, yeah. tree. Groot, Groot, Groot yeah. was so, awesome. I mean, so Ant Man comes out before this movie will, right? Yep. And yes. Then they're oh, just yeah, gonna kind. Of, it kind of feels like they're just throwing him under the bus there, like because they they'll have this full Ant Man movie and then he won't show up again until Avengers. Now, Another to be fair, Avengers? they did the same thing with Hulk. Well, that's true, but yeah, I mean, his previous great. movies were kind of not great. Maybe they don't have faith in the uh, yeah. in that botched Ant Man movie. I'm saying botched because they changed directors and creative staff right like weeks before they started filming. So, so but, but it could be better. We don't know yet. We yeah. haven't seen it. Yeah. I mean, if the trailer says anything, I'm nervous. But yeah. Yeah. Didn't we go over that too? Yeah, we did. Yeah. Uh, um, any other Facebook comments? Uh, actually, kind of the same deal. Eric had the same question about if they introduce him into Civil War. Will he will it be a quick introduction and still be a young kid, or are they going to do more of an origin story in that? I hope that they just do a quick introduction, and let that be it, and do the origin story somewhere else. Or hell, I hope they honestly, honestly, this is the third time we've gotten that origin, origin story, story in twenty years or fifteen years. Do what they did in the Incredible Hulk, Edward Norton movie, and just have it part of a montage at the beginning of the movie. That works. Oh yeah, yeah. You remember that? That works. Yeah. Cause yeah. Totally. have the montage. Yeah, we really might need montage. I might have thrown that around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but here's the thing. If they do an Ultron thing, Age of Ultron cameo, there's not going to be enough time to cast that. So it's probably going to be just suited Spidey uh, with some CGI. And they're probably going to commit to a suit really I, early. I almost I almost put money down that we won't see anything in Age of I Ultron. I guarantee that. I mean, I, I'm right there to make that Unless bet with you. Unless they do like a really quick thing like they did with the Sharma Scene yeah, I mean, it like could be a stinger, yeah. but that's the only thing. The stinger's going to be Black Panther. I've already called it. That. Wouldn't, it wouldn't huh. hurt to have uh, Spider-Man in the background while civilians are being hurt, saving people. Something like that. that. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's a, he's a, just just fight through a scene. see something swing in the background. He, like, yeah, absolutely. 
Absolutely. That's and kind that of what would, happened. That would generate huge buzz. Exactly. Like, oh, God, yeah. Well, well, I mean, I mean do you even remember the, back in the day when the uh, Incredible Hulk came out and uh, the Hulk had Betty underneath that rock and it was raining and there's a lightning oh, bolt. Yeah. People go, if you zoom in, there's Thor. Thor is in yeah. that lightning bolt. No, he wasn't. No. <laughs> there's a, no. No, he's not. But yeah, that, yeah, that was the Though rumor. they did have Captain America's shield. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. that was specifically placed in Iron Man, so. Um, okay, so, well, we got to talk a little bit about casting, and i got to give a shout-out to my wife on this one. She pulls me aside, like, wait, who are they going to get? She, hey, she loved uh, Andrew Garfield as, as um, Peter, and that is probably a little bit of a lusty choice. <laughs> She's like, I love him, he's so dreamy, why can't you be more like him? And I'm like, why can't you look like Emma Stone? And then I slept on the couch. <laughs> he sleeps there a lot. He's, it's Quite often. Comfortable. Um, but she goes, uh, that Logan Lerman kid from Perks of a Wallflower. Man, I'd love to see him as Spider-Man. I, like, I Googled it just to see if somebody come up with a Photoshop. One of the first names rumored. Hmm. And um, I'm like, look. And she's like, oh. And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, oh. <laughs> so, Eloquence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Logan Lerman, he was also in Percy Jackson. Yeah, he was, in, he was the main okay. character in Percy Jackson. Now, the cool part about that is hmm. that franchise is hit the ground and died. I think they had badly. two movies, and they were expecting to take off like Harry Potter. That's when they kind of launched it, and it they, didn't work. They screwed up the adaptation so badly. I sat through them with our oldest because she read the books. Yeah. And she's like me. If she goes and sees a movie that's based on books and they change so much, I'm having to do this. Shut up. It's not the book. Uh, yeah. Because that's what he does to me when we go to see anything that's based off a book and they change it. And I start to say something. He's like, shut up, it's not the book. Don't we do that with comic book movies? All, all the time. time. Yeah. Uh, so, so what are a couple of the other people that are... Uh, Dylan O'Brien from The Maze Runner. Dylan O'Brien! Sorry. Did anyone <laughs> see Maze... that movie? Yeah, has anybody no. here at the table seen no. The Maze Runner? Nope. Anybody? Anybody? No. Anybody? Anybody? Anybody watching see that movie? Did anyone in the world see that movie? Yeah, I'm yeah. hit us sure. up on, on our, our social media. Did Tell did us know. if you watch The Maze Runner. Facebook.com slash Trade Paper Hacks. Yeah. <laughs> also... Uh, one we just heard, I hope we get this name right, uh, Taron, Taron, Egerton? Egerton. He was in uh, The Kingsman, The yeah. Secret Service. Shout movie. out to Austin for bringing that up. He yeah. said that he went to go see the movie, and I was like, how was it? It's great. I found my new Peter Parker. Really? That's all he said about the film, was that the, that guy should be Peter Parker. Is he they, British? I don't know. They love casting Brits in these roles. I, I think he is, because he has the accent, and it's very... I mean, it's a. It's so dreamy, and I just I love it. No, he's too and young looking for me. Sploosh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was fine with Garfield. He, he yeah. was cute enough for me. So, um, I gotta be honest. <laughs> I gotta be honest with y'all. I um, I'm gonna actively, actively put my hat. In the ring? In the ring. Peter Parker? Oh, God, to be Peter Parker? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa, no! Whoa, no! Whoa, no! <laughs> yeah, so... I, I said I was uncomfortable <laughs> earlier. I take yeah. that back. Yeah. <laughs> but he's going to be in high school when they bring him in. I can pull off high school. I am entering I mean, my high ring. How old is Andrew Garfield? I mean, shadow? Garfield is what, like 30? He's 31. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm 28 now, or I will be. By the time this movie comes out, I'm perfect for the role. <laughs> I could be Spider-Man. I got the goofy ass hair and everything. I mean, I, I see. When was the last Spider time? swings in. Howdy, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what are y'all doing down there? <laughs> I got these web spitters. It's just silly strings. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Alec. I'm Spider Man. <laughs> they always know who I am. Yeah. So yeah, that's. Uh... I wish I had a paper bag to put on your head right now. Oh my god! Perfect, yes, to, to, to be that costume. fantastic. Yeah. You have to write to be bag on man. <laughs> or is it because you think I'm hideous? Hey. Whatever goes with you. Say the shoe fits. Wear it, friend. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, it's official. Uh, trade paper hacks will be featured in the next Marvel movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll make sure I look at the camera and wink. <laughs> hey guys, do you uh, know? I'm Spider Man. I'm Spider Man. Tug his ear Spider-Man. like Carol Burnett used to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, here, here. This is this for her mother or grandmother yeah. or something like that? It's yeah. for her mom. Yeah. It's for her mom. All right, so uh, that pretty much wraps it up. I'm sure you all have questions about how ridiculous this turned out. Uh, if you're only listening, maybe check out the YouTube to see how freaking ridiculous I look. Um, 
There, there will be photos. I, I am promise. wearing a full Spider-Man costume. I think that wasn't <laughs> laid out there. A full, I mean, sleeveless Under Armour garbage. Yep. Yeah, and it, it, it's it's as good as half the Deadpool blue cosplays leggings. I've seen. My God. Yeah, <laughs> blue skin tight leggings. You have some chicken legs, brother. <laughs> I do. Is, I just, I, I really like the fuzzy socks. I think that's what <laughs> Spider Man will wear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's got to be comfortable. Oh, I mean, he's running yeah, around all day, right. no, hanging I mean, around Avengers Manor yeah. with his shoes off. Yeah. I had red <laughs> shoes. <laughs> 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 I had red shoes, but they uh, I had to take them off to take my pants off, which and happened on air. That's all you need to know about that. <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, I'm going to stay in the outfit, and we're going to keep the guests around. Um, next, we're going to talk stereotypes, and they're going to quiz me, and I'm going to give them what I think the first stereotype is for that subgenre of nerdum. All right, hang out. <laughs> And we are stop that. We're back. Thwip, Alex thwip, is still thwip, thwip, Alex thwip, still pretending thwip, to be Spider Man. You're this out of the audition thwip. tape. You're out of the whip. There's no more whip. You're you're empty. Okay. So <laughs> so bringing this back in here, we uh we got to talking the other day about you know how nerds are perceived. I guess and there's different subcultures of nerds. And sometimes it's unfair. Sometimes it's fair. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it's like all stereotypes. There's a little bit of truth in all of them. All of them. Yeah. So, that being said, we kind of thought we'd come up with a game for Alex here, and we're just going to uh, name off different fandoms and give Alex's first um, gut reaction to these things. And before we start, I would like to say that um, anything Alex says, I personally and Jason and everybody else attached to this show has no opinion that agrees with this man. To be honest, I'm not even sure if my opinion matches my own. I, <laughs> I agree with that, especially when you're wearing stuff like that. Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> so, so to give you an idea how this works, uh, we just throw out a stereotype, white people. Um, a group of people that love condiments more than food. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking as a person okay. who puts ketchup on literally everything, yes. Yeah. <laughs> you don't see many brothers doing that. <laughs> hot sauce. Yeah. yeah well, yeah. well, yeah. is hot sauce really a condiment? It's more like a necessity on white yeah. people. Yeah. White people. <laughs> white people. White people. <laughs> white people. <laughs> white people. <laughs> white people. <laughs> white. <laughs> All right, white people. All right, let's throw these out there. I'll throw the first one out. Bronies. Uh, they have officially ruined internet searches for every little girl ever. Oh. <laughs> so true. Oh, so true. It's so true. So uh, true. Uh, uh, no, that's just yeah. terrible. It's not me, it's them. <laughs> You're a bad person. Would you let your kid Google My Little Pony without supervision? Without safe search on? Yeah. Super filters? I have a nine-year-old daughter, and I'm like, mm, nope. Nope. But I'm gonna look up ponies no. online. No. See? All Not right. my eight year old. My fifteen year old has her own tablet and looks up crap all the time. I really love ponies. Oh my god! <laughs> Pony love everywhere. <laughs> oh. Alright. <laughs> Why do we you, start with bronies? You okay over here, Josh? You look like you're losing it. Was, it. I mean, <laughs> just just <laughs> I could be wrong. Thwip, thwip, thwip. Save Josh. Yeah, there there's a him. lot of thwipping with the ponies. <laughs> 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 Is Wait. Nightmare Nights going on right now? I don't Feels know what you're like talking it. about. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pony convention. Oh. Pony con? Yeah. Is yeah, there but... another? Is there another My Little Pony movie coming out in theaters that they're going to buy all the tickets for so no little girl can see it? Oh. Is there a My Little Pony movie in the theaters? They've done exactly. it. Exactly. They've done it. Because you couldn't get tickets. Yeah. So it's just so I didn't wasn't in the know. Yeah, just, right. They don't um, want anyone but the bro. Look, we, how about Marvel? Okay, well, let's go. Marvel fanboys? Yeah, Marvel fanboys. Uh, let me think. Um, all right, those are people that love good movies, colorful comics, um, and generally have low IQs. <laughs> oh, ouch. Wow! Ouch. Woo. No, seriously, Marvel is the shiny object for fanboys with ADD. You're one of those, right? Like, a little bit. I'm not saying that. Wait, you're one of those? No, no, no. Uh, well, no, I know. I know. The whip? Well, it could have been the Under Armour. It could be an Under Armour fanboy. How do you feel about Under Armour fans? Uh, Under Armour fans are uh, people that want to shop at Baby Gap, <laughs> <laughs> but it's inappropriate. So. Well done, sir. Well done. 
<laughs> it just said jocks on that one. Just say okay. So if that's how you feel about Marvel fanboys. What about DC fanboys? Um, those are people that love Batman and tolerate a ton of other garbage. <laughs> <laughs> no do, do they like bad movies too? <laughs> other garbage. Okay, <laughs> other garbage. Okay, I'll go with that. Noted. Um, I'm a Green Lantern fan, not a Batman fan. There you go. How right, other garbage. Green Lantern. Oh, oh, let me tell you how that went after oh. Jeff Johns left. Yeah. <laughs> Let's reboot that entire thing. <laughs> yeah, that didn't work. Let's do this. Thanks, no, Jeff. Worked. We're ruining yeah. it for everybody. <laughs> right? So, so okay. Got those. What about indie comic readers? No, like your images and your other books and yeah. stuff like that? Yeah. Hack slash. Hack slash. <laughs> okay, so those are the annoying <laughs> guys. <laughs> 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 those are the annoying guys in movie theaters that say, I bet you didn't know that was a comic book after every trailer. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and they also love saying, now if you want to read a good comic book, mm. read this. Those are indie comic readers. Pretentious assholes. Right on. The hipsters of the comic universe. Yeah. No, hipsters don't even read Image and Dark Horse anymore. That's like what is yeah. Icon. What? No, Icon's owned by Marvel, so oh, I mean, hipster no, would Avatar? never touch that. That's never true, you're right. Too off label. Yeah, Avatar, Aspen. You know, I only read things the guy on the corner draws when he's drunk. <laughs> you probably haven't heard about it, but it's really good. It's really good. It's on napkins. I love beer. Yeah, it's on napkins, so don't get it wet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Stop crying on it. So, okay, so we have a magic podcast group ah, with us here. So oh, I'm gonna get in trouble for it. Yeah, magic Go. players. Give us some magic. You want a magic player? You've got four. Just to be clear, four of six of us are okay, magic players. Okay. Okay. And I used to play magic. Right. So. Okay. I'm gonna get mauled here. Uh, these are people. Too cool for Dungeons and Dragons, but not cool enough for the opposite sex. Oh. So are you implying that we're cool enough for the same sex? Sure. Oh, actually, cool. yeah, I'm, okay. I'm down with that. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I got yeah, it. A stamp of approval. <laughs> <laughs> same love. <laughs> uh, wow. I'm running out of mana. Oh. 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 Man of love. You try. Hey. Oh. Uh, 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 all right. Cancel uh, that. Uh, <laughs> dissolve. <laughs> Ooh, that would be fine. Anyway. What? what, uh, uh, what? I don't yeah. want to know where that was going. All right, fine. So if you're going to bring that up. No, I was thinking it would be kind of funny if we went around the circle doing as many counterspell names as we possibly could. No, that wouldn't last. That would be, that'd be great for me. Right. Yeah. 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 Before we go on, realize that these are just... Stereotypes. They're not oh, always right. true. I'm sorry we have a married magic couple here. It really You're ruined sorry joke, you guys. haven't <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <that's right. laughs> Why did you even come on, guys? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry I'm a girl? Mm. I'm not. It's uh, <laughs> good. That's, that's real good. good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's his preference. Yeah. <laughs> we're being uh, we're being friendly here in the PC. <laughs> We're not saying, oh, good guy girl combo, you know? <laughs> We'd be like, love, that's a good combo. His preference was matched. <laughs> he didn't have to settle for something he didn't want. <laughs> Wow, you what? keep us way down the God, hole. That was... <laughs> Bad job. He's like white rabbit. He just went right down with it. Anyways, next one. Uh, come on, somebody should be something else. So you, so you brought up D&D players, so what the hell do you think about them? Uh, this is just a stereotype. <laughs> no, I was saying that I know there's D&D players at this table as well. Oh, yeah. He, uh, he's pointing at himself. And, and Josh. And people, I'm the, sure the two guys are much bigger than here, me so. standing <laughs> in the My corner. Brother. They uh, made good don't... movies. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> How could you say that with a straight face? Good. It was I tried. <laughs> Marlon Wayans for the win. That's, you know who the first one to die in that movie was? Marlon Wayans. Yep. <laughs> Keeping the stereotype real. <laughs> Alex doesn't even know what you're talking about. The D&D &D movie. Anyway. What, it's fun. <laughs> what is your stereotype regarding D&D &D uh, players? For D&D &D pay, uh, players, uh, those are people that ha have more individual pieces of dice. Sets of dice, sorry. They have more sets of dice than they do uh, numbers in their telephone. Fair point. <laughs> I can't really argue that one. <laughs> wow. Hard to argue that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a new that set. One, that one hits a little too close to home, dude. That's not cool. <laughs> okay, next. Uh, how about Trekkies? Uh, Trekkies. Um, they don't go by that anymore. Oh, um. <laughs> they're, they're Trekkers. We are called Trekkers. That noise. <laughs> You will call us what we want to be called. Wait, do you like to be called Trekker? 
Do you have a preference for it? When we're on, checking honestly, checkers? I can kind of understand some of the arguments of it because in the community, some of the community, a tricky is considered a derogatory term. Really? So yeah. trekker yeah. is the more respectful term of it. F- your preference. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you would would be cold he got applauded for his preference. <laughs> <laughs> Mine. <laughs> because well, the thing is, his preference involved his. Your <laughs> involves your underwear collection. Well, look at all these Star Trek underwears. That's all you have. Oh, I'm a Trekker, not a Trekkie. It's stupid. So your stereotype is that? No, it's not. Right, what is it? Yeah, man, it's real simple. Y'all had to take it somewhere weird. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't take it. You took it with someplace weird. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. <laughs> uh, Trekkies. Uh, they are uh, close. Uh, closet soap opera fans. That's that's all Aww. they are. They just love soap operas and. You know, with science, science in space. one life to live in with space. Yeah. Can we put reverb on that and post in space? space, space. Sure, I like it. I already did it. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Took care of that. I, I, did, handled... I did your job for you, Tech. Yeah, yeah. 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 To, to be fair, their their writer is also precognitive because he did he did uh, come up with cell phones and tablets and pretty sure and I'm touch screen a, computers, uh, Star Trek device flashlights you hold like an ass. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I like uh, that. <laughs> it, uh, <laughs> I never thought of it. Yeah, like, thanks for ruining Star Trek. I love ass grab. <laughs> so Star Wars. How do you feel about Star Wars? Instead fans? of Star Trek. Yeah. All right. Now Star Wars fans are people who love to recycle. <laughs> okay. Uh, they wow. hate surprises. Uh, and has selective memory when it comes to bad sequels. Oh. <laughs> There weren't any bad sequels. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, there were terrible prequels. That noise. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to do you want to switch gears here a little bit? Let's switch Let's gears. Get out of, the, out of the sci-fi nerd yeah. stuff. So, what what about Buffy? Buffy. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I haven't yeah. heard that in a long time. I know. What? Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. still relevant. Oh, uh, let me think. She's still a pretty decent role model. Okay, uh, this is the television friend zone. <laughs> this is the people who are generally dedicated to a to a woman without ever seeing any boobs. Oh, let's be honest. Everybody's Buffy just, fans. You guys like what, Buffy? No. Is that what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, no. I'm, I'm trying to Look, evaluate. I this. guess <laughs> there's, I guess no one disagreed with him. This is what <laughs> what? But but there is another upside. There's there's no boobs, but there are hot women making out. That's true. That does happen. Yeah. You know what else? Well, I guess the internet really wasn't as a. Uh, I guess the internet really wasn't <laughs> really prominent back then. But uh, there's. I mean, you had it, but. Go it to college. Really slow. Yeah, well, okay, college. yeah, yeah. Go enough. to college. Is hey, are you on campus? Yeah. Women making out. That's that's yeah. <laughs> Who loves attention? I doubt though! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so TV, TV kind of area. I, I had a little nerd rage on this earlier, a couple mm-hmm. episodes ago. What about Supernatural? See, I had some preconceived notions prior to you talking about that. I think Supernatural, I think of, like, horny cat ladies. Oh, my God, he wow. nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dean, you're so beautiful. <laughs> Come here, Mr. Whiskers, it's time for our annual. <laughs> our annual? They do this once okay. a year, just a marathon. Yes, and what that is, that's the, uh, when I say that, I mean, like, the season end where they start with Kansas. That's how you know. It's no, legit. I know what you're talking it's about. It's going down when you hear "Carry On My Way." I'm young straight. and I have dogs and I'm a man. I, I no believe two thirds of what you just said. <laughs> yeah, he is wearing a pretty tight Spider-Man outfit Bam. here. Pose. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. <laughs> That's why we have pop screens. <laughs> what else we got? Who's next? Who's He's next? still slipping under the table. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Stop the flip. Foot, 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 foot. I'm not using my hands. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we brought up Supernatural, so let's talk about some old ancient horrors. How about Yu-Gi-Oh? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Yu-Gi-Oh fans? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, or just the game. I'd, I'd be okay with you making fun Ho- of both. Horrors or whores? Is that what you meant when you said Yu-Gi-Oh? Hey, did I slur that? I kind of did. Whores. Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh fans. Pussies. Next. Whoa! Wow! <laughs> just that's the stereotype. I don't believe that. Wow! 
I was gonna go with thieves. The, you know what's funny about yeah, that? If you were to walk into first. a shop full of Yu-Gi-Oh players and just yell that out, you'd get your ass kicked immediately. And that's a stereotype of Yu-Gi-Oh. How about that? Thuggish, ruggish bones up in there. Ruggish? Ruggish. They just wear carpets on their head? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that's a stereotype. <laughs> <laughs> Those are stereotypes they have at airports. Oh, oh okay, okay. Uh, you took it there. Come on. <laughs> wow. All right. No, I genuinely know that's what I think. <laughs> I mean, like, like, why? Because because they don't play a real card game, or just because they're like? No, I seriously think that they're all. Uh, I mean, that stereotype. Like, just thing. literally, just doesn't matter what. Like, <laughs> the second you put a Yu-Gi-Oh card in your hand, like, just oh, pussy. this sounds like a great <laughs> idea. Vagina. <laughs> I'm a. <laughs> I mean, to, to be fair, they, they put cards out. <laughs> I activate. <laughs> I activate my trap card. <laughs> no idea what you're talking about. All right, moving oh, on. <laughs> Come on. So, so since you brought up Yu-Gi-Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh is based off of a TV show. How about anime and manga fans in general? Mm. Anime, manga fans in general. Um, I don't really have a stereotype as much as I just want to make a message clear. <laughs> Look. We, the, uh, opinions of Alex Lee's are his own. <laughs> they do not reflect trade paper hats. I'm not biased in this one at all. <laughs> Look, anime, manga fans, we get it. Japanese people are better than us. <laughs> we understand that that's what you believe. Um, it's probably not true. You just have no way to self-identify with American stuff. So, anime, I'm talking hardcore fans. Like, come on, let's try some local stuff. Why? You don't I don't, I don't, don't mean <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't understand your 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 complaint here. It's not his. It's a stereotype. It's a stereotype. Oh, okay. It's, it's, not, it's not him. It's it's, I mean, it's fine. you're generalizing. It's him. The stereotype him. is anime manga people think that Japan is glorious motherland. Oh yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. But they sell panties and vending machines. So. And they sh when it's squatting. <laughs> yeah, but that's why it's glorious motherland. That spider pose I, mean, I was doing earlier. That's a Japanese. I mean, who doesn't want to wake up in the morning and just squat over the toilet? Exactly, and that's what they do, and right. that's okay. Japan's glorious. I'm part Japanese. I'm very proud of that. I, uh, I sh sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I don't like Throwing off the much. chains of oppression there. Yeah. Good job, buddy. <laughs> okay, okay, anime and manga makes me think of cosplayers. Uh, okay, I'll do, a, I'll do a positive one. Really? Uh, yeah. I don't cosplayers. believe you. Because I'm wearing a costume. <laughs> you're, you're a cost. You are you're playing the cost now. here. I'm playing the cost. Um, uh, cosplayers. They're uh, they're fashionistas smart enough not to major in fashion design. Mm. <laughs> Sick bird. Let's wow. well, throw it in another direction. They're also pretty kinky swingers. So let's, let's be honest. Swip. <laughs> 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 okay. So, so speaking of cos like cosplayers, because many of them cosplay Harley Quinn. So, what about Harley Quinn fans? I think Harley Quinn fans, um, I uh, it kind of falls into two gender buckets. Uh, you have Harley Quinn fans that are girls, uh, which only come around in Halloween. <laughs> That's a stereotype there. Um, and there are also people that have never seen a picture of Harley Quinn. And then uh, for men. Uh, men who like Harley Quinn uh, generally just don't wash their hair. And they would love to find a girl that would be okay with that. Oh, Harley Quinn, she understands me. <laughs> I think wow. poor hygiene, I think Harley Quinn fans. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> As a stereotype. You're throwing down a gauntlet now. Exactly. I am. I'm going to see how many comments we get. Like, Alex is a total jerk. I mean, I, he's heavily implying that I'm like, half tempted to let our eight year old Harley create Quinn a comment fans. just for that. Fair. <laughs> no, because I don't want our eight-year-old to tell Alex to eat it. <laughs> I'll censor myself on that one. Because <laughs> she would. My eight-year-old daughter loves Harley Quinn. <laughs> okay, eight-year-olds don't really fall into stereotypes. <laughs> Let's be honest here. They do. They're, you got eight-year-old Harley, Harley Quinn fans. You ready? I'll even go as far as saying, like, from five to 12, really bad at their multiplication tables. <laughs> you like that? She, she is. Is that okay? Yeah. There you go. It's a good stereotype. Yep. Yep. Real. <laughs> And, she, and she'll hit a boy with a hammer. She will. A real hammer? A real yes. hammer. That's Ball seems bad. Yeah, that seems like a problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you want to... You want, I'm, I'm going to break I'm character, okay for, I'm break character <laughs> for a second. Say, that's probably something you want to address. <laughs> no, uh -uh. So I think he's got I, the right idea. I'm you good with start, that. 
I'm going to uh, start teaching my daughter. You're, you're talking to dads around. here with their daughters. That's it, so like, a different sentiment. Yep. <laughs> let's kind of applaud to these. Uh, do a few more. Uh, okay, Harley Quinn fans. Let's do the opposite spectrum that we hate. Deadpool fans. <laughs> the end. <laughs> the end, done. Get Next right. one. That falls Moving into my eight-year-old. Uh, as a person who is very poorly attempting to grow one, how about neck beards? <laughs> Scott White. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Scott. That's that's a call out, bro. <coughs> <laughs> it's not a neck beard though. The man has a fully fledged, real like it grew up. It's a real beard. <laughs> it started to creep on his face like crabgrass. Oh. It started oh. on his neck and made its way north. <laughs> oh. uh, all right, do we have any time for any more? Ch 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 chia. We got time. Okay, all right, let's, let's, let's do one. Here, here, here we go. Um, the people that'll you know talk to us people that have been reading comic books a long time. We're sitting there, and then somebody walks up that's seen a Marvel movie and thinks they know everything about a comic book. What about people like that? Well, you kind of answered... wannabes. <laughs> well, no, no, so people that know uh, movies and pretend to know comic books, we usually just generalize those as Marvel fanboys. Oh. Wow. Wow. Rec recursive, recursive. I like recursive, it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bring it around fired. full circle. <laughs> full yeah. circle. So, there you go. Um, how about, since you covered Marvel fanboys, how about Wolverine fanboys? Because they're just people that like Wolverine. Uh, those are people who started reading books in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, Batman fanboys? Uh -oh. Batman fanboys? I mean, those are usually generally handsome individuals really <laughs> um they're usually very strong mm -hmm. um no strong sexual seed is that what <laughs> they, i mean they whip everywhere yeah that's yeah. 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 spider-man yeah. Spider yeah. Spider yeah. Spider yeah. Spider i can't think oh, of anything so, bad yeah, about sorry. batman nothing at all nothing mm -hmm. anybody else want to take a stab at that he, he he mentioned this earlier i want to i want to bring up another fandom oh no wait any there. batman ones before we go on Bad Batman stuff. Yeah, do you have any Batman? Uh, uh, he's a slight psychopath. Just saying. Well, no, 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 I'm not talking about Batman. I'm talking about the uh, the, the fanboys. Oh, the fanboys oh, are slight who, psychopaths. It's it's people who can't sociopath. grow up emotionally. I mean, they're yeah. just like they're stuck as a child. It's like, all for literally just a child. Really, because yeah. nothing feels as good as seeing Batman stomp face when you can't beat up the guy yeah. at McDonald's. Yeah, or, exactly. Orphans who never got over it. Right. Oh, <laughs> all right. So, oh. Always be Robin. <laughs> Shots fired. All right, next fandom. Walking Dead. Ooh. Oh, that's a good one. Um, Carl. You have two. Coral. Coral. <laughs> Coral. <laughs> Coral. There we go. Which we're missing. <laughs> no, uh, Thanks. We already missed it. Yeah. yeah it's, and we're missing the encore. <laughs> and Talking Dead. Uh, Walking Dead. Um, you know what? It's actually a travesty. <laughs> Well, no, I, I feel bad for Walking Dan, Dead fans. Those are people born too late to enjoy the original set of comic book movies. Uh, I'm sorry, zombie movies. Fair. Yeah. yeah. That's fair. They, and then, when you say George A. Romero, they like you. What? Who? Who? George A. Romero. Everybody's going to know. Is he make pasta? You mean, that, <laughs> you mean the Stan Lee of zombie movies? Exactly. <laughs> the glasses and the... Yeah. <laughs> what if he just got a cameo in, like, every zombie movie? Right? That'd be <laughs> sure. Awesome. Like that would be awesome. sweet. I mean, so... Be, well, it's like Tom Savini. That's, yeah, Tom yeah, Savini did a lot. Yeah. We're getting deep there. And, well, we uh, are deep in, the, yeah. deep in the zombies. All right. That is not a place you want to be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, Happened in the... Not the Evil Dead, the Walking Dead. Return of the Walking Dead. Somebody had oh, sex with a zombie and it oh, turned him into a zombie. Talk about a sea-level zombie movie. Return. Man, that, that, that wow. was the third one. That was... That yeah. was that's how deep my lore goes on that. So here's was, a question. How do you feel about zombie fans? Do you have a stereotype for zombie fans in general? People who love merchandise. <laughs> <laughs> People Would the who, same go true uh, for like vampire fans? No, vampire fans, those just are... Um, Twilight. There's a difference. There is. There, there's those are, no, no, no. You got the virgins. <laughs> <laughs> okay, That's here's Twilight one. fans. Yeah. Fifty Shades of Grey fans. Um, Ooh. <laughs> those Cat are uh, no, 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 no. Those are those are housewives that have invested heavily into double A batteries. <laughs> Why stop there? Nine volts, twelve volts, hard battery. <laughs> <It's all available. laughs> I got a gas power generator in the back. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Any other fandoms? Babylon 5. Ooh. What? I got, wow, that is left field. <laughs> somebody, somebody take that because I've never known anybody dumb enough to be into it. <laughs> Stereotype right there. That was, oh, was Babylon 5, 5 is people that didn't get Battlestar Galactica. Yep. Babylon Ooh, 5. Good. Stereotype. <laughs> Go. People who are really looking forward to binge watching. <laughs> That whole series is written at once, like a five. J. Michael Straczynski wrote that. Did you know that? Don't care. Don't know. I do know yeah. who he is, but I yeah, don't care. But he wrote that. <laughs> I was more of a Farscape guy. Were you really? No. <laughs> <laughs> Farscape is boss, dude. Farscape. Yeah, is Farscape rules. So what's awesome? Uh, which problem with Farscape? Puppets. Okay, so Farscape. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Typically, puppets lead to furries. Furries lead to that kinky stuff. You know, he Burr just fucking suits. nailed that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hey, that's where the furries came from. Yeah. I think that's the, so oh my the, god, when I was growing up. Oh my god. Yeah. Jim Henson created furries. Whoa. No! That, that's his end game. <laughs> He's looking up in heaven going, I got you. Job done. <laughs> the conspiracy is real. Any others? I'm well, I mean, ball. so so since we're on the '90s sci-fi shows, how about Sliders? <laughs> Don't even remember it. Great. Quantum Leap. Ooh, Quantum just leap. keep going. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, yeah. The most awkward sex. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, people who are still hanging on to the idea that holograms might happen. Holograms will happen, bro. Quantum <laughs> Leap fan. Tech <laughs> Booth is definitely a quantum leap fan. Then time travel's never fixed anything. Exactly. Yes, yes, it has. Doctor Who. Uh, Whovians, Yeah. Yeah. What you what you thought on Whovians? You know, I thought I thought Star Wars fans loved recycled crap. <laughs> I think of I think of uh, Whovians as the Muggles of the sci-fi universe. <coughs> like they desperately want to be in with the sci-fi, but I mean, I am a Whovian. I'll put it there. <laughs> But for the most part, they really like watered down Jim Henson stories. It's kind of what it feels like. You just wake up in the middle of the night and you're like, did I hear the TARDIS? Yeah, what? Yeah, I wish that was something that I could duplicate with my vocal cords. I would freak everybody out. No, I'm just, no, <laughs> just walking I'm around sounding like the TARDIS? Come on. The world's Why better. does Hagrid sound like the TARDIS? Yeah. <laughs> and there's the double down. You're a time lord, Harry. He opened, he opened the door with Yu-Gi-Oh. Digimon. Oh. Uh, sh- because there are there are fans out there. Oh, I, we, I got harassed. Oh, no, it, just, it just got rebooted. Yeah. I got harassed a few episodes ago about uh, Digimon. Oh yeah, yeah. that's and the cosplay episode about, with Cospod. Yeah, with Cospod and Valerie from Cospod. Um, I, I think what I said then was, uh, uh, "Hipsters too cool for Pokemon." <laughs> <laughs> Like, I can go with that. I mean, one of them's <laughs> obviously better. It ain't Digimon. I can't believe that you haven't said this one yet. Wrestling fans. Oh. Yeah, we, I didn't want to start that fight. <laughs> <laughs> Wrestling fans. Uh, the clothesline yeah. is genetic. It is. <laughs> just saying. Re- wrestling was my fandom. Right. Was just right. tap out. Just tap out. Yeah. <laughs> um, Magic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He's tapped. <laughs> What's the likelihood I'll get beat up here? <laughs> I got your back, bro. <laughs> Tag me in. I'll, t- I'll take my mass over genetics any day. Uh, <laughs> let's see if I can just go kind of make a list. <laughs> wow. Oh, wrestling uh, has a stereotype list. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. Um, all wrestlers guaranteed white trash. If white. If white. Mm. If white. They grew up poor. But we're talking about the fans. I oh, know. I just want to get that one out first. Okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Fans of wrestling, people who are dumb enough to want to be like white trash. <laughs> uh, it's genetic, right? <laughs> wrestling yeah. fans, yeah. wrestling fans, and I, I would have made this comment anyways. Uh, wrestling fans are usually white guys that have goatees. Damn! Oh, mind blown. Check the YouTube video. <laughs> yeah, no, most of them have goatees, and if you shave your goatee, you find yourself less interested in wrestling. <laughs> True statement. <laughs> that that's kind of true. He shaved it at one point. And he stopped watching. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I think what it is is the goatee and the flavor saver, which you don't seem to be donning right now. No. Uh, the are genetically tied um, to trailer park smell. 
<laughs> okay, what is trailer? Trailer park, park smell is is, is, is key to the flavor saver, but sometimes it, it's it's the smell of this food that's gone bad. Because what's happened is you've eaten food and it's spilled down onto your goatee. I'm not saying beards; beards can comb through. Goatees are too short, and that hair just permanently smells and makes you make poor decisions financially, entertainment wise. So I'm just throwing it out there. You might want to shave. <laughs> Uh, also, um, homophobic, genuinely homophobic for a bunch of people that love watching dudes in tights. You hit him on all six cylinders here, friend. <laughs> I hope we still have listenership after this. <laughs> hey, y'all wanted me to be edgy. I'll be edgy. <laughs> okay, let's, let's shift gears from wrestling. Final Fantasy fans. Um, you, that's know, like you, almost, whole... you get a lump them into the anime group. No, no, whole, they are their own right, sub Final Fantasy fans. You can basically um, say Square Enix at this point. No, yes, Square, Square Enix, Enix fans. fans. Uh, Gran Turismo. No. Yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah, good. out of nowhere with that one. What's up? Wow. <laughs> so, somebody no, knows no, some no, video games. Yeah, what the hell? Dropping something. That's my dance for knowing my knowledge. Yeah, I use my brain. <laughs> Drop the mic. Uh, no, those are expensive. Fine. Thank you. <laughs> Microtech, everybody. <laughs> um, what was the question? Oh, Final Fantasy fans. Uh, people that want a remake of a game that wasn't that great. Ooh. Ooh. And who can enjoy new games because it's not a remake of the game that wasn't that great. <laughs> that's that's kind of actually uh, true. Yeah, um, I gotta give him that. Uh, yeah he, he can't argue with that. Yeah, what's that's up? The what's up? <laughs> or the ones that argue about the, the game that wasn't so great against the game that came out before it. Uh, six? Yes. Um, you know what? Genuinely, uh, people don't care. <laughs> uh, Me included. <laughs> All right, so I, I think I have the last one for us. Okay, great, because we're running out of time and I'm getting sleepy and delirious. <laughs> Podcasters. Uh-oh. Podcasters. There are a lot of them. I said this last <laughs> week. This is my personal. Uh, people that don't have a... Uh, people that don't have... Oh, I'm sorry. I'll get it. Hold on. Breast. <sighs> <laughs> 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 uh, people genuinely... I keep saying genuinely. I know. Genu as genuinely is your word. People who generally have faces for radio <laughs> and voices for silent film. Agree. Do you agree with that? X gets the square. X gets the square. Anybody else on that? <laughs> Anybody else on the podcasters before Alex takes us out? I think he hit it. I did. I, I don't yeah. Know. I think well, at least from the male perspective, incredibly well hung. All of them. All the podcasters. I mean, <laughs> somewhere just, approaching three to six. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's just. <laughs> it's it's not good. Uh, <laughs> three to six. What feet? <laughs> Yes, light years. Just literally <laughs> un you just can't even see it. It's just astronomical units. <laughs> Folks, this is uh, this is what happens when we record late into the evening, well past our normal comfort zone. Uh, bring on guests who we can't trust to talk appropriately. Uh, whom have goatees? <laughs> Monsters, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> you, you're the one with the neck beard. You are. <laughs> he's, he's the one talking about Brody's the whole time. No, it looks like it grows I know, it does. In I know, like it that. does. It, it honestly does. It grows in on Joe Dirt like. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. Look, there's a lot of things I will stand for being compared to David Spade. Is that one of them? <laughs> just at least he's not flipping in your face anymore. But just to back up, he did say people with goatees make bad decisions. Look where I am. Oh. oh. Ow. And here we go at the end of the show. Uh, he's on your favorite podcast, uh, Trade Paper Hacks. The show we've so finally ruined tonight. <laughs> God, this is going to be an amazing YouTube video, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, all right, so I need to thank my guests outside of them uh, bitching and complaining the entire time about being here. Uh, the Direct Damage cast, uh, Leifeld and, and uh, Miri. Uh, also Yay! From, uh, Thanks for having From... Uh, you can check them out on zero fortitude.com. Yes. Thanks for the invite. Thanks for having Thank you for me. Josh Hawks hanging out, our resident uh, magic and gaming and all that kind of jazz, neckbeard guy uh, from Gen X, uh, which is actually where we are recording from Generation X Comics and Game Studios. 
Uh, over here in Bedford, Texas. Southeast corner of Harwood and 121. Southeast corner of Harwood and 121. Uh, next week, we got to talk about the show next week. Has anybody booked a show next week? Well, yeah. Uh, we, I got the uh, initial response, the RSVP from uh, a one Chad. Chad? A Chad. Chad. The Chad. Two Ds. Chad. The Chad. Yeah, Chad. The two Ds. Double D Chad. Double D Chad. He <laughs> says that he's not going to make it next week. The extra Ds for Deadpool. <laughs> Yep. Uh, so okay, we're gonna figure something out. So no Deadpool episode next week. Um, the week after though, we're gonna get the week there. after. We're gonna finally get to some Deadpool. We'll come up with what's gonna be on next week's show. Uh, I did already say we're at Generation X Comics and Games. I can only say that so many times um, before they refuse to ever pay us. <laughs> um, I think that already happened. <laughs> yep. I want to thank Microtech Booth, our, our new sound guy, a sound expert, helping out a uh, regular Hagrid Tech Booth. Uh, Mark Brewer. Um, did we ever come up with a nickname for him? Micro Brew. I like calling him Micro Brew. I like uh, uh, Mini Tech. Mini Tech. Uh, Micro Tech. Uh, Mini Brew. Mini Brew. <laughs> Mini Brew. Mini Brew Micro Tech. Uh, please leave a. Dude, that camera's off. Uh, <laughs> leave that. I'm going to talk to this one. the camera. Uh, I'm going to talk to this one now. Um, I've been looking at that one all night. <laughs> Loved that camera. Yep. <laughs> Kill it with a smolder face. <laughs> go Lobo. Yeah. Go Lobo. Go Lobo. Go. I guess I need to thank regular old tech boo Jason Dyer. Don't worry about that. Yay. Yay. Um. All right. So you got to hit us up on social because uh, first you have off, to after this. you have to. Actually, first off, you have to hit us up on YouTube after you listen to this show. Jump over to YouTube. Just watch. Just just pick through it and love it. Uh, I, I bet you money you won't be able to not watch the entire thing. Uh, and not my money. J, uh, Tech Booth's money. <laughs> um, so that's, Come that's, and get it. That's that. Uh, you can hit us up on Facebook. Facebook.com uh, forward slash Trade Paper Hacks. You can hit us up on Twitter at Trade Paper Hacks. Instagram at Trade Paper Hacks. Tumblr, for some reason, Trade Paper Hacks. All one word. All one word. Or you can do the old school thing. Email us at... Uh, Trade paper hacks at gmail.com. I don't know why I couldn't remember that for a second. That was really interesting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, the old way with the, now, the emails and the things. Now, before we let you go, let's let's recap real quick. There's nothing wrong with magic players. They actually turn out to be okay people. Don't be afraid. <laughs> <laughs> don't be afraid to, <laughs> to go out and mingle with the people on the other side of the comic book room. Yeah, uh, go, 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 go talk to a magic player at some point. Be brave. Uh, Clear yeah, the fog. Don't, you know, yeah, we're yeah, through don't, it. Yeah. Don't worry yeah. about it. Um, Hands across the comic book shop. Kumbaya. <laughs> I'm gonna, <laughs> and I'm going to do what I said with the, with the, with the Facebook news. Um, do your best to be excited. And if you're not, have an open mind about Spider-Man being on Marvel. Uh, Everybody Marvel, should be excited about it. It's going to work great. Yeah. Um, and then at the end of the day, there's a lot of stereotypes out there. Don't, don't, you know, don't listen to them. Make, everybody's their own person. Um, but... If you know that person's never going to hear you say it, go ahead and say whatever stereotype you want. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just go ahead and get out there. It's, it's okay. It just, it's, yep. it's, Start it off on a good down. note. Yeah. I mean, what people don't hear doesn't hurt them. <laughs> especially, if you post, especially if you post on the internet. Yeah, nobody <laughs> ever nobody hear. can see anything on the internet. Cyberbullying is a thing that they can you know, accuse you of, but they can never convict. You, you don't have a tattoo of Roy Orbison on your ass, do you? Just, I'm compelled to ask that now because what well, mama don't know won't hurt her. That's right. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, the yeah. Fonz earlier. Never mind. Right. <laughs> so once again, before we leave out, I'm going to tell you to uh, support your local comic shop. Go read a comic book. And try not to look like a dork when you do it. 